Uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, good evening, or whenever you're watching this. Uh, we're back together again um, with Glenn Rawl, uh, Professor and Chief Academic Officer at Fox Chase Cancer Center and co-author of uh, Principles of Virology, which is now in its fifth edition. Uh, I mention all that just by way of saying that by now, Glenn is a familiar face to all of us as we have uh, traveled through this pandemic together, and he's given us the benefit of his uh, insight into some principles of virology. And today we're going to be talking about booster shots, um, specifically the Pfizer booster shot and uh, ancillary issues. So Glenn, let's just kick it off right at the beginning. You know, what is a booster and how does it differ from the vaccination shots many of us received earlier this year? Right. So there is your chair is very squeaky, Jeremy. Sorry about that. Sorry. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, the booster shot is uh, no different at all from the first and second shots that you received if you got the Pfizer vaccine. It is exactly the same uh, vaccine. It is exactly the same dose. What makes it a booster is more about the timing. So um, the FDA has recommended the people who have had their first two vaccinations a period of time greater than six months, they those individuals would be eligible to receive a Pfizer booster. So otherwise, it's just a third version or a third dose of the same vaccine that you first received. Why are we only administering for Pfizer and not Moderna or Johnson & Johnson? Yeah, that's simple. Um, it's simply because so far, uh, EUA has only been granted for the Pfizer vaccine. I expect that we're gonna have one from Moderna. That's what I was vaccinated with. I suspect a, a Moderna booster and a J&J &J booster will be forthcoming. In fact, just this morning in the news, J&J uh, &J has asked permission uh, to be considered for uh, a booster. So I suspect that um, if folks got other vaccines other than Pfizer, that those booster opportunities will be coming uh, coming down the road fairly, fairly soon within, I'm guessing, the next couple of months, but they're they're not out yet. So will this booster prevent me from getting breakthrough infections from the Delta variant? No, it won't. And that might cause some confusion on the part of folks who are considering getting this booster because what is, although happily it's on the decline, but what I think a lot of people are anxious about is even if you're vaccinated, there is, the truth that you still are susceptible to getting the Delta variant. And therefore, if you get infected with this, um, you might be able to spread it to other people. And so I think right thinking folks might say, well, if I get the booster shot, that's going to prevent me from getting the Delta variant. So it won't for the following reason. So the Delta variant for the SARS coronavirus replicates better that means it grows faster, it's stickier, therefore it can adhere to susceptible cells better. Um, and if you get infected with it, even if you're vaccinated, it begins to replicate or grow in the upper respiratory tract. So vaccinated individuals that get, get the Delta variant, um, many of them don't even know that they've had it, so they're asymptomatic, um, or um, they have very mild signs of it that are consistent with an upper respiratory tract infection, like a common cold um, sort of a, a thing. When it replicates, when a virus replicates up here, it hasn't yet kind of awoken the host's immune response. And it's only once the virus begins to penetrate a little bit deeper that the body's immune response that has been trained by the vaccinations um, sort of wakes up and kicks it out. So it is certainly better to be vaccinated and uh, if you're gonna be exposed to Delta because um, most importantly, the disease is far less, right? So you're not gonna end up in the hospital. You're not gonna end up having, uh, being put on a ventilator. You don't run the risk of death. And, and better still, the infection period is much shorter. It's only a period of about five days versus a couple of weeks. But the booster is simply filling back up your tank. That is, if you sort of think of your immune response like a gas tank. Right now, most of us have got a fair bit of gas still left in the tank. So after you've been vaccinated, 
over time, neutralizing antibody levels will start to go down, but they don't go down precipitously. They go down very, very gradually. So it is equivalent to having three quarters of a tank of gas. You still probably have sufficient immune memory to keep you protected against the Delta variant, against the parent for a long, long time. Um, but if these boosters are, are available, it allows you to top off your tank that'll get you just a little bit further and provide a little bit of added protection. But they're not necessarily going to protect you from getting um, um, infected by Delta. And it's the reason why um, even fully vaccinated individuals or institutions in which uh, a high proportion of folks are vaccinated still are requiring masks because it is the tried and true way to prevent transmission of the virus from one person to another. So I always like your analogy of a gas tank, but gas does eventually run out, even if it runs out over the long term. So should we be anticipating a future where, where booster shots are a regular occurrence? Right. I mean, so this is all guesswork, right? I mean, like we've not ever been here before, ever. Um, so, I mean, there have been other pandemics before, but not in which vaccines have been developed so effectively and so quickly. So anything that I'm going to say is conjecture and therefore, you know, it may or may not come to pass. Um, I suspect all of us, regardless of the vaccine that you initially had, will need a booster shot at some point. I don't, my own personal view is that there isn't remarkable amounts of compelling data that you need it right now. Um, at the same time, I think if it's offered to you, it's wise to get it. Um, but I'm pretty sure that all of us who were vaccinated earlier in 2021, by sometime plus or minus a year thereafter, so by early 2022, will have gotten a booster shot. Um, I think at that point, it's very much dependent on how the world is doing with respect to vaccinations. And if worldwide levels are uh, decreasing as a result of general acceptance of these vaccines. Um, if it is, we may not need another booster. My guess is there might still be benefit pro provided by getting um, a, a second booster that would be for the RNA vaccines, a fourth inoculation at some point late 2022. But this is not going to be like influenza where you must get a booster every single year. I don't there's there's virological reasons why flu is unique in the sense of requiring a booster year after year. I think for the pandemic, for the coronavirus, certainly one booster, maybe a second booster. And I suspect by then it'll be sufficiently in our rearview mirror that we won't require um, annual booster shots any longer. So are there side effects that people should be expecting after they get the COVID booster? Well, I think um, because it's the same vaccine as the one that you got, you know, six, eight months ago, um, the side effects are the same or similar. Um, I actually think in some way they might be a little bit less than after the second dose, right? So what often was true for folks is that the first dose was well tolerated. The second dose, they had, you know, a little bit of unpleasantness within that 24 hour period. I think for the vast, vast majority of people, it was mild and it was short lived and it could be relieved by some over the counter pain medications like naproxen or Advil or whatever, Motrin, whatever your favorite is. Um, I think the reason why the second was a little rougher than the first is just because of the timing. You had just kind of resolved the first vaccine and then three weeks or four weeks later, here comes the second one and it kind of is waking up a sleeping giant. This booster shot is now going to be happening months, right? Half a year after you got the second dose where your immune response has kind of eased into this memory state. So what I believe has been in general true for people who've received boosters thus far is that their symptoms are more mild than they were after the second shot. But no matter what, even if you don't feel especially well, it's wise to get the booster because it will continue to keep you protected from the things that matter. That is the serious disease and the, the death that occur from COVID infections. Um, and it's short lived. Whatever the side effects are, the local pain or, you know, sort of a little bit of body aches or a low grade fever um, are easily resolved and they go away within a period of 24 hours or so. 
So Glenn, as we're wrapping up in a way, you um, sort of answered this question when we were talking about the side effects, but I'll ask, ask it anyway, because I know we're going to break this up um, by questions on the YouTube video. What advice do you have um, for people who may be unsure about whether to get a booster? Well, I think that there is, so first of all, the health system at this point is not mandating this, right? So don't, let's not confuse this with the urgency to get vaccinated in the first place, right? This is offered to folks who are either older than 65 or who are younger than 65, but either have already increased risk of infection, which includes healthcare workers, or at increased risk of severe disease if they became infected, such as um, folks who are actively um, uh, immunosuppressed. So cancer patients undergoing um, chemotherapy or um, um, individuals who've had uh, bone marrow transplants or HIV infected individuals, right? Those are all individuals that um, might benefit from this because to keep my metaphor, their gas tanks are a bit smaller. For the other folks that have um, immunocompetent or who have um, otherwise typical um, immune responses, there isn't an urgency to get this, right? This, you know, calling in the middle of the night and driving 100 miles to find some CVS, you know, way far away that you can get your vaccine. This is not going to be like that. You can get your booster at one of the temple uh, opportunities, but you can actually also probably go and get it at CVS or 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 elsewhere. Again, so far only for Pfizer. Um, so if you have doubts or if you have worries, um, I don't think that there is an urgent rush that you get your booster, but you will eventually need it. To keep my metaphor, eventually the gas runs out. Eventually your neutralizing antibodies will decline to a point where you might be more vulnerable to getting infected. And, you know, we've done everything right so far for those folks who've gotten vaccinated. Now is not the time to, to drop the ball. And I, I, I don't know what added fear would accompany the booster um, because you've already gone through it. You've already gotten both of your vaccines and you've benefited from that. So this is just, in a sense, more of the good that came from earlier this year. Um, certainly happy if there's folks that have particular concerns, they can reach out to me by email or they stop me in the, you can stop me in the halls, but I don't see any real reason to be anxious about the booster if you've already gotten the original vaccines. All right, well, Glenn, we had set a goal of making these shorter than previous videos, and I think we've accomplished that. I know I speak for a lot of people on campus and whoever else may be watching this when I say we really appreciate you continually coming on to make these videos and offer guidance and education on an ongoing important issue. And so we'll wrap up there. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you to those uh, who are watching. Um, we'll be back as merits and um, have a good afternoon. Thank you.